know what, though? Let me. We gotta get one more thing, and I can. Well, I, yeah, hold on a second. I gotta. Hey everyone, good to see you this afternoon. So that is the finished product. That's what we're trying to get to here in this tiled course. So, hey, on the way in here, please give me a like on this video. It really helps out the algorithm. Uh, and I just wanna say I'm really, really thankful for all the new subscribers coming to my channel. Make sure you hit that, no uh, that bell notification though on my subscription feed, because that'll make sure that you get uh, these live stream updates. I try to get these things out twice a week, um, but uh, you know sometimes it's just kind of like I get something together and then I can finally get on here. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, share this with your friends. Um, you know, so thanks so much for being here. And so today we're going to go into our fourth part of our tiled walk-in shower. The main reason I'm going over this is because I feel like everybody should have access to this type of information of how to go about remodeling their own bathroom, inflation prices, contractors, not, you know, not too many out there these days, harder and harder to get people to do things for you. And that's what this channel is all about. It's just kind of learning, growing together. And, uh, you know, you know, and if you do your own bathroom, I'm telling you what, you will really be well rewarded. You'll be loving it for years to come. It is something to be proud of. And, uh, you know, it really does make a difference with your mental attitude and everything else in life. So uh, let's get into here. Uh, if you've been on my channel before, I like to go through a little synopsis of what this bathroom was, what it cost, and then also getting into, um, you know, the course and the layout. So that's, you know, one of the big reasons I'm doing this is because I want to share this course with you. It does cost a little bit of money if you want to get into the course, but you'll be able to find all this stuff on YouTube and we're gonna get right through it. So uh, if you've been on here before, you can skip about 10 minutes and come back and we'll be getting into the actual part four of the series. So let's take a first, you know, I always like to get some motivation here for everyone and try to show what things cost. Now it's getting harder and harder to figure out what things are gonna cost as uh, inflation and different things continue to grow. But this was something that I quoted last year and uh, so you could might as well just add another 10, 15 percent onto the um, onto this bid. So you're a bike boy. Thanks for coming in here. Um, so, yeah, thanks for uh, everyone who's stopping in here on the live chat. That's one of the main reasons I'm doing live, too, is so you guys can communicate me, ask your questions. I can pause the video, go over some stuff. Um, but I'm going to get through, you know, the beginning parts of this and then, you know, I'll take your questions, try to keep it to the towel, walk in showers, but at the end, anything bathroom, you might wear out on uh, bathroom remodeling related. I'd be more than happy to help you out. So this was last year. I did this for uh, a really awesome woman, uh, older woman that I had two bathrooms. So both courses I basically created out of her home and it was just a typical standard split entry home. And this was off of her master bedroom, master bathroom. So it's kind of a typical way uh, a lot of these homes are set up where you have basically a four by nine or a four by eight bathroom off of the master bathroom or bedroom, I should say. And then there's just a walk-in shower, toilet, and a vanity. So, you know, nothing too overly whelming, but, you know, you'll see in my course and as we go through here how much work this actually is. Uh, and I do have a lot of suggestions, obviously, on how to go about this. Uh, especially if you're getting into a home that's maybe hasn't been remodeled in 30 years, it's really a good idea to just go about um, just replacing everything, taking that drywall down, demoing the entire bathroom so you know what kind of plumbing, electrical, you know, you're most likely going to be modifying things, especially if you had an old nasty, you know, uh, fiberglass enclosure that's just kind of moldy and dingy. You're going to, you know, this is what this is all about, doing a tiled walk-in shower. So you're going to have to move some plumbing. Um, and you're going to probably put in a new shower faucet as well, or at least I hope you do anyways. I really, I really implore you if you're going to spend thousands of dollars on tile and a new system that you just got everything because the labor that it takes to finish some drywall and redo some of these things, it's going to save you over time, like the amount of time you're actually in the project because, um, 
rather than continually making patches and opening up walls to move things, especially if you're getting a new vanity in, uh, especially a freestanding type of vanity, you want to make sure that your plumbing is all set up to do that. So, uh, but my quote is just kind of very simple. I kind of just highlight uh, what uh, each part of the project is. So my demo, I roughly charge about a thousand bucks. It usually costs me about $200 to get rid of all that stuff. I have a pickup truck. Uh, in my course, I do have some recommendations. You can go to a local transfer station. You don't have to actually order a dumpster, especially in a bathroom this size. You know, four by, um, you know, just a regular pickup truck bed would probably get the majority of the, uh, the materials out of there. And you can go to a landfill or a transfer station and pay 75 bucks to get rid of it. So it's not going to be really expensive unless you do rent a dumpster. And then, you know, they, they definitely charge an arm and a leg to keep that there. Um, and then I go into the, this is what we're going to get into today. We're going to get into the waterproofing. Now I did quote this woman, Schluter. I was going to do Schluter originally, uh, but I had already done two other showers that are going to be coming out here on, on video on my platform here soon. And I didn't want to do another Schluter shower. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to go between Schluter or the system I'm going to show you today, which is weedy. And it really just comes down to drain location on knowing, you know, planning ahead and knowing what's there. Uh, and then, you know, I know a lot of people are having a hard time getting availability of things. So which one's ever is more convenient to actually get. But really, at the end of the day, I don't really differentiate the cost of each. And we're going to I'm going to show you that real quick of what this actual weedy system that I installed cost. Um, but when it comes to the labor of installing a Schluter system, it is a little bit more work. Uh, so I kind of factor that in and then the weedy system, you know, typically I've been doing so many of these things. I've been doing them for over 15 years now. Uh, ever since I saw it, I kind of, I loved the system. It was so easy to put in. And, um, so the time savings of actually doing this weedy system, uh, cuts everything down for about, a, about an hour's difference for me really. So, um, so anyways, looking at my quote here, we went over the shower faucet, which I should say, if you get to my YouTube channel. You can go to playlists here, okay, and then go under uh, towel walk-in shower online course, and you can view all the other um, ones that I did basically outlining my course. So the last one we did that shower enclosure, so or the uh, shower faucet I should say. So in the, in my quote here, I charged thirty-two hundred dollars to install this handheld shower unit with all the waterproofing. Now. You know, keep this in mind. If you're watching this a year from now, you know, things might be drastically different. But relatively, I pretty much my my material costs to do this was around eighteen hundred dollars. So that really left um, twelve, fourteen hundred dollars worth of labor and then maybe miscellaneous things that I might have needed. So really you kind of split that in half. It took me half the day, you know, to do the shower faucet and then took me another day and a half to do this weedy system. So, uh, you know, really, you know, if you're a contractor and you get quick at this stuff, I don't see any reason you shouldn't be making a hundred bucks an hour, at least here in America and, and where we're located. Um, that is kind of the going rate for, uh, well, I wouldn't say going rate. I really don't know what the going rate is. I should say it's just, uh, that's relatively what it works for my business. You have to account for all your own business expenses. But anyways, it was $3,200 and roughly I have about $1,400 worth of labor and then maybe whatever else expenses that I have for my business within that. So you can do this in two days as far as putting that shower faucet in and then doing this waterproofing. So, you know, add it up. You can definitely, um, you know, make a decent living doing bathrooms. There's no question about it. And I really implore more people to get into it because we're really needing a lot more tradesmen with the, you know, the aging population that we have. So many people are wanting to get rid of their tubs and, and installing walk-in showers. So there's a lot of opportunity here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping I can help you out to be able to be successful in that. So I'll get into the rest of the estimate as I get further into other videos, especially when I get into the tiling process. But here, I just wanted to show you the end price. And this was including all the materials. So keep that in mind. And these were not like over the top expensive products. You know, the shower doors were probably the most expensive thing. And that usually is the case, but relative, you know, I pretty much charged about 14,000 to do this bathroom. Uh, we did go over budget a little bit because there was additional things that needed to be uh, done. So it was roughly close to about 15,000 after everything was said and done with. And my materials were roughly around six grand. So 
there you go. You can save yourself eight to $9,000 by doing this yourself. And I'll give you a little bit of motivation uh, to do that. But I wanted to show you before we get into the weedy system, uh, what, you know, this is a price just from, let me shrink that down. Um, oh. This was a price from uh, November. Okay, so, you know, again, you have to keep this into perspective of where you're at, what things cost, you know, you know, if you're way out in the middle of nowhere, it might be hard for you to even get this product. And I, I don't know if anybody can see this or not. But anyways, a three by four pan, which is weedy, as a contractor's price is around 450 bucks. So it is expensive, it's going to cost you more than an acrylic base, you know, most of the time you can get a, um, you know, a, a basin of some sort for way under that probably $300 pretty easily. Uh, but obviously we're doing custom tile. We're trying to make this, you know, a really beautiful spa like feeling. So keep that in mind and, and engage that for yourself because that's a lot of extra money to just have a tile floor. You know, maybe you would be happy with just a, a regular basin and save yourself a bit of money. Uh, but there are some other costs that you just can't get away from. And one of them is you, you want to waterproof your walls before tile. It's really, really important to have everything waterproof behind the tile because tile and grout itself is not going to keep that water from ever penetrating it. And if you torn out a lot of old bathrooms, you know that's the case because there's usually mold and deterioration. Or maybe your bathroom is already leaking because of that. And that's why you're going to do this. Um, but the three by four panels or three by five panels, I should say the, the weedy panels that we're going to be installing, which is basically the backer board about 40 bucks a sheet. It was $300 for the actual wall board in this. So, um, and I'd say that's a, that's, you know, weedy is expensive. There are definitely alternatives that can cut that price. You're not going to really cut it in half, uh, but you could probably get go board or some other type of foam board. That would be, you know, about a hundred dollars less than that. But weedy, as you as you'll see in in this demonstration, why I love it so much and why I really uh, think it's a good investment overall. Um, but you know, keep you know, everyone has their own budget and can only afford certain things. So keep that in mind. But um, you know, the foam curb itself uh, was about seventy bucks, and then which was really important to me. I really love their curbs. If you're doing a curb shower, I like the weedy curb. I like the KBRS curb because they're fully waterproof all the way through. So if you had a glass enclosure that you had to put a screw in, you're not concerned about it leaking or causing any problem. Whereas Schluter's curbs, you penetrate that membrane, it's done. Um, there's a lot of different systems out there. I think even Laticretes, even though you put a liquid waterproofing over it, they're not there. You know, you put a screw in it and you can damage um, the actual curb. And then you never really want to do a wood curb. Uh, you know, anybody who's just putting two by fours around it and you can get it, you could sleeve over. Now you could do weedy board around two by fours. So maybe some of the scrap that you have left over from your weedy board from doing the walls, you can definitely make a curb out of that. That's not a bad idea, but you just don't also want to penetrate through the board and into the wood or, you know, there's a leak point. Uh, we needed, um, what else did we need? Um, well, I have a corner putty knife. That's not something that you absolutely need, but it's definitely helpful. I got some seam tape. That's kind of like a, a similar to the curdy band that you want to seam between the drywall and uh, the actual weedy board. So that, you know, we'll show that here in shortly too. That was about 30 bucks. I got a flex collar, which is basically the valve seal for my, uh, around the valve. Those are nice to have. I think it's good extra insurance, 12 bucks for that. And then I got a couple of uh, pipe seals. So I think pipe seals are almost a must, especially if you have a handheld shower, because you want to seal around that brass nipple that's coming out that you're connecting your port to. Uh, I'll be showing that a little bit later on um, and after the tiling process. Uh, but uh, that flexi collar is really important, I think, for uh, keeping you know, water out of that porting area. Uh, and then you need the, the sealant. So I got about 10 tubes of sealant. That's not cheap. They're like 12 or $13 a tube. So it adds up. Now you can save yourself money as a contractor and get the bigger cartridges. But uh, relatively, you're talking about $1,100 for this shower. So that is, um, you know, that is kind of the cost of things. So that's kind of what I've account for in this quote was about $1,100 worth of waterproofing material. And that's just for a three by four shower. You might get it at another hundred bucks if you do a, 
taking on a tub and putting in your walk-in shower. 100, 150 bucks, I'd say. I think those pans are relatively expensive. But I'll show you in my course, you know, it's hard to get this stuff online. It's really expensive for shipping. Uh, so if you have a towel shop, I'll show you some places you can get this from uh, locally. Um, but Weedy is now, I believe, is made in America. It is in uh, Chicago area, I believe, at this point. I think they have their manufacturing set up. So that's that's a positive thing. So anyways, let's see here. Let's get into my course. So let me see if I had who's all in here. Uh, I got to get my... So I hope this volume works out. I'm having, I'm still having problems with, uh, you know, with this volume. Hopefully, I don't have any echo this time. So, um, so Jaden, I'll have to get into your uh, questions here a little bit later because I want to get into the form here and then we can start answering some questions. Uh, Swanee, definitely, I'll get into some of your clip questions as well. But getting into my course, uh, so at bathroomremodeling.teachable com is basically where I'm housing this platform. You can always go to my website as well, bathroomremodelingteacher.com, and I have all the links through that. But this is basically the platform that I built this on. And right now I have three courses that I, I really do feel kind of are bundled together in a sense because they all kind of go in line with one another. And if, if you're a contractor, I definitely think you'd benefit from all three of these. But the tub and shower one, I really kind of made this thing, has everything in it. It has the drywall installation. It has, um, you know, it's setting the toilet. And it goes a day-by-day -day process of how to get this done. So um, the tub and shower course really has basically a map of how to get this done in a, um, a quick amount of time. And it goes through every part of the process from installing the vent fan installing the toilet, installing the vanity, everything. So that's going to really help you out if you're doing other things in your bathroom. I do plan on adding like another part for this particular tiled walk and shower so that you can, if, you, if you're doing the entire bathroom, you can step through that as well. But the tub and shower course is really going to be all the same processes. You know, the toilet's going to be the same type of installation as it is in the tiled walk and shower space. So Think about that. Um, you know, if you email me, I could definitely discount that if you're going to be buying both courses. I'm going to try to figure out how to bundle these things together as well. But then I also have custom glass enclosure as well. So if you can't find an online retailer that fits the size of your shower, if you're putting a bench in, you know, and you do anything like an, an L notch or if you do a knee wall of any sort, you really don't have much choice other than to order custom glass. So I created this course to be able to get you um, learn how to measure, order, and then install your own custom glass. And if you've ever had a, a reasonably sized shower quote, like a four by four shower that's like open, you know, you can get quotes for between three and four thousand dollars all day long. So this, every one of these, uh, you know, I really made this because I want this to have tremendous value. I hope it has tremendous value. I'm looking for feedback. If you don't like the course, you can always just hey, you know, within thirty days. Just tell me, hey, Steve, this didn't really help me out, um, and I'd be glad to, to refund you. But I think you'll definitely save <laughs> the money within this, and then you can also, I'll be more eager to uh, answer questions as well. Not that I don't want to do this on the live stream. I'll, I'll answer some questions later on here. But I'm going to view this as a student, and we'll get into the, um, the custom tiled walk-in shower. So, again, this is basically going through the entire process of building the shower from doing the framing. So, again, check out my YouTube channel on the previous playlist of this. I go into all of what's in this course. So the framing is a big deal. Uh, it really helps out. It makes everything, it's like the foundation, you know? So you really wanna spend your time on framing and getting things set up correctly. And I uh, have a lot of important tips in there. Moving a shower drain, that's always a painful thing. You just don't know until you remove that old shower what you're getting into. And so I give you a lot of um, tips and strategies of going about this. And I do want to keep adding on more content into this course as I do more showers, as I get more content, I'm going to add different situations in there because obviously everyone's home is different, and especially in these older homes. You have no idea what you're getting into until you tear out that shower surround. Uh, so moving a shower drain, I always implore you to get a new trap on your shower, especially if it's 30 years old. You, you know, most likely it's probably half clogged or, you know, it's just going to be easier to center the thing and get it to where you want it to be. The shower faucet, this was a Delta system I installed and I showed you the fastest, easiest way to go about that. And that was using the PEX or at least what I believe is the easiest. Um, now, this is all based off of my experience. I've been doing uh, contracting for 22 years now. I started when uh, 
uh, well, 2000, it was a little bit before that. I got incorporated in 2000. So it was really prior to that that I really started in the contracting on my own business. Uh, but just say for purposes of, of, of my actual business, SRW contracting, I've been in business for 22 years. In the last 14 to 15, well, really 15 years now, I've been doing nothing but bathrooms. So I literally, I really wish I could count them all, but I, I have to have had, say, at least on 100 bathrooms. And this weedy system that I'm going to be installing here, the, the waterproofing here, I've been using that for 15 years, and I've probably at least done 40 showers in that. Uh, between tubs, showers, tubs and uh, tiled showers. So the test of time for me has been here. I've been installing this. I never really got a callback. The only callback I've ever had on a weedy system had nothing to do with the waterproofing. It had to do with the tile setting where I didn't have the thin set wet enough and the tile just kind of um, came up on me. So, But what's great about weedy is that it's waterproof all the way through. So if if you ever had a tile problem in the future, you can literally just remove that tile, score it down, and you're not really overly concerned about the waterproofing because it's waterproof all the way through. So even if you took all of this um, membrane off the top of the surface, which you know hopefully you don't get to that point where it's, you're tearing out all of that membrane, but it's still waterproof under it. So you know when you do get a call back or if you did have a problem it's not the end of the world you can always replace that tile and most likely not have to like replace the entire pan whereas you do a schluter system it's going to ruin that membrane you're going to have to reef and angle you're going to have to redo that so um that's another real benefit not that you want to be you know preparing yourself for a failure of any sort but um you know i've learned everything the hard way for the most part and that's what i really love about being part of YouTube being part of um, all the social media stuff. I want to give back what the lessons that I've learned. And I'm obviously learning a ton off of all the other contractors that are sharing. I just wish I would have had this when I started out 20 years ago. So it's it's really phenomenal. And uh, if you're here watching and are on this channel, that's, that's uh, you know, you're definitely going to be ahead of the game and make it a lot easier. I go into the tiling pro pro process, obviously tiling a curb in this instance. And then in this shower, we just did something simple. I didn't want to go too crazy. When you do recess niches and stuff, it definitely does take a lot more time to install. And it, it definitely uh, becomes a little bit more of an intricate tile pattern. But if you do glass shelving or corner shelving, it makes it pretty easy and you can get through it pretty quickly. And a lot of times when you're getting into a smaller shower, like three by four, like this, this is basically 40 inches wide. I don't know. I think you have enough room for all your stuff on that, but you know, maybe a lot of others disagree, but the niches are nice. It's just, they do cost a lot more money and definitely take a lot more time. You get into the famous class as well. Uh, this is a door kit. I was really happy with this kit. So you probably might have seen it already on my channel. I have I have all of these videos in a different form on on uh, YouTube here, but uh, yeah. So as you can see, it just goes step by step. Uh, you know, starting with the demo and then the plumbing, and we did the rough end valve already. That was our last demonstration. We did do. Let me just go into here. Oh, why is that? Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, well, I'm, I'll just show you this and push this over because I, don't, I want you to see the full screen here. But as you can see on the side here, it kind of outlines everything that goes into the course. So you can easily just click on these and get in, you know, easily find yourself around the site, go back to position. So, but I wanted to show you the drain preparation. I'm not gonna go through it again because we already, we already went over that the last time. Let me get this down. Uh, or maybe this up. Maybe I need to make that up. There you go. Okay. Um, so what I what I wanted to do in this course was make this easy for you to just, rather than having to watch another, I mean, this was only a minute video, so we're not talking about a lot of time here. But, you know, I didn't want you to have to watch another 15 minute video. I just wanted you to go through this fairly quickly and refresh your memory on stuff, especially if you're in a job site. So eighth inch, uh, you know, you want to cut that pipe flush. So this is just the, the specs from the weedy, uh, instructions and obviously you need to have a two inch pipe um, but you know using a jam saw cutting that pipe flush with the subfloor is what you want to do or up to an eighth inch you just don't want to be uh, below that or uh, a quarter inch above the subfloor but those jam saws usually cut it nice and flush and then you just want to debar your pipe very simple concept on this one um, but I wanted to just show you how how this is laid out 
uh, where else we have cutting the pan to fit we already did that on our last live stream as well so yeah here's like a five minute video you don't need to watch this whole thing you can just go through here and just refresh your memory on how you're going to go about it you know measuring the full width just go measuring from one side don't measure from both sides or try you know i mean obviously double check yourself but you want to make sure that that drain location is pretty centered uh, that's the one thing about the weedy system it has to be it's pretty accurate it is kind of like an acrylic base in a sense like you don't have a whole kind of a lot of movement and that's where the schluter system is definitely uh, a lot more flexible you, you definitely if you didn't know where your drain location was or if it was a little bit off center um, it, you know, not that you can't cut the, the weedy pan to make it off center. It's just how much off center it is. Like if I had a shower drain that I couldn't move and I was six inches off of center, I'd probably go with the Schluter system because I can easily cut that. And then even if I didn't even could, couldn't even get the pan tight to the wall, I could fill in the rest with deck mud and then just waterproof it. Whereas the weedy system, it needs to be, you know, wall to wall. There's no other choice. So that's, I'd say that's the biggest reason, uh, the differences that I would use between Weedy and Schluter. Schluter, you know, if I didn't do my homework and I didn't pay attention to what the house was laid out or I didn't, I totally forgot where the drain was, I just go ahead and buy Schluter because I don't have the time to run out to the home, reinspect and look at everything. So Weedy, you have to do a little bit more homework, pay attention to where your drain location is, try to figure out maybe where your joists are. That can be really tough on a second floor. It could be almost near impossible until you tear everything up. Um, but if you have already have a, a fiberglass shower and it's somewhat centered, um, you really shouldn't have a problem with the weedy system. It's just, you know, it'd be really unfortunate if you had a joist or something structural right where your drain needs to be. And if you have the weedy system, it can be a problematic in some, in some ways, but, um, just marking the pan. I like to use a table saw when I'm cutting these things down. It definitely makes it neater and nicer. Um, Obviously, table saws are made for a reason. It makes everything more accurate. But you're just recreating that rabbit joint. That's all you're really doing uh, when you're cutting this pan down uh, because the, the, the wall panels kind of slide into the side of the pan. Um, typically, you know, you really don't want to be cutting more than three inches off of a side. Not that you can't, but just know that the pans are designed to have the whole perimeter the same height. And as you cut more off of one side, obviously the slope at that edge is is lower than the outside perimeter so if you were to take six inches off you're talking about an eighth and an inch lower on that side than it is on the back wall for say um, that's not a big deal eighth inch is not a big deal at all but it's just if you were to take a foot off you're talking about a quarter inch difference that you got to start paying attention to before you start tiling and making sure that you uh you know that you're you're, gonna, you're not going to have a, a big gap on one side of the shower versus the other which i never really recommend and you'll, you'll see in my tiling videos i never really recommend starting out with a full tile off of your base anyways you want to have the ability to scribe cut it to the pan um, and then the alternative way is just to use a circular saw but you're basically doing the same thing you're recreating that rabbit joint and then just making sure that this is centered obviously you don't really have after you cut the pan the size there's not too many options whereas the schluter system you could be wildly off and still be able to fix it. So, you know, I would say Weedy is a little bit more precise when it comes to the pan installation, but everything else about it is pretty tremendous. So, and then if you buy the course, um, you can always leave me a comment, ask a question. And again, as things get bigger and uh, I get more communication with people, that's where I'm going to be spending my time. Um, so, all right, so we're going to get into the drain location, but maybe I'll see who else is on here in the chat. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm yeah, Swanny and Biker Boy. I'll get back to you on that a little bit later. I want to just get through the course and then uh, we'll get into some of those questions. So let's go into the drain connection and setting of the pan. Uh, so this is a obviously a, a key point to the whole system, but it is pretty easy. It's just literally a um, a compression type of fitting to the drain and you can use this the drain it can be you know abs piping pvc um, and I, they do make a donut uh, for copper if you needed to leave that but again i would really recommend you change out the trap and the riser pipe no matter what you do and then i mean because most of these kits are going to come with um, basically the drains that actually connect to plastic uh, PVC or ABS. They're not going to really connect to copper without having the bigger bushing. You can order a bushing for copper, but uh, 
you know, I'm sure most places aren't even stocking those. So, all right, we'll get the, we'll get started in this part here. This is the drain connection. So this will be our drain, our weedy drain. So this is a really simple concept. It just has a rubber gasket inside. So this is gonna slip over after you get the pan set. So we'll hold these aside. But then it just has a rubber gasket and a slip ring. This paper slip ring allows you to tighten it. So it just comes in three components here. So what you wanna do is take that rubber gasket, everything off of there. Always use the weedy sealant, the sealant for this project. Okay, and then put a generous amount on the actual drain receiver here. And then I also like to do a nice bead on the drain. So just make sure that that has a nice bead all the way around there. And we'll just set this in place. Make sure that you see that oozing out on every aspect of that drain. We'll make sure it's well sealed. And then we'll just turn this around. There still is an echo, isn't there? And now this is only gonna need to be hand tightened. So you just put your rubber gasket on here, the slip ring, and then the locking nut. And again, this is only hand tightened. You don't have to get a big pair of pliers or anything. Now you do want to wait about 15 minutes before you actually connect it to the pipe, which usually isn't a problem. But uh, you know, the actual drain connection, but and you have the other to side, thin set and everything else. Just anyways, smear that. So. Sealant, nice seal on here. So then here, just wipe, wipe the excess sealant out of there, and then that's all you need to do. So go ahead and make some thin set and set the pan. Okay. All right. Um, so for the weedy pan to set it on a wood subfloor, you want to use a modified thin set. I'm just using Schluter's All Set which is basically a modified thin set. I mean, it's mainly used for their product, but it's a modified thin set nonetheless. Just make sure you measure the water. I only need about a half bag to do this floor. Probably won't even need that much, but I'm gonna be doing other waterproofing as well. So, um, you know, to minimize things, I would just go with a half bag. Always measure your water. So, and I would go with like the membrane consistency. You want this to be fairly fluid. You don't want this real thick. Unless you're trying to make something level. If you're trying to, offset like a quarter inch or something like that, maybe make it a little bit thicker, but the important thing is that it's gonna bond to that subfloor. Okay, so you can, you can see how loose of a consistency it is. So that's why I like it, because I think it really bonds well to, to the, uh, the pan, but I would go with the membrane setting for mixing the things up. Okay, so the first step is to dampen your subfloor. So if you're over a wood subfloor, or even if you're on a concrete subfloor, just take a damp sponge and wipe down that surface. This does two things. This basically takes off all the dust, but secondly, it keeps that thin set from just immediately absorbing into the plywood. You wanna give that thin set a little bit of time to, to cure. So wiping this down will make it a lot easier. What we're gonna use is a quarter inch by quarter inch square notch trowel to set the pan. And then the first thing you wanna do is use the flat side of the trowel and do what towel setters call burning the thin set into the substrate. So just using that flat side of the trowel and just working it into the substrate. This also makes it a lot easier for spreading the thin set and getting a nice even layer if you do this first because it, the trowel kind of glides over the thin set. makes it a lot easier to get some good trowel lines. You want to do directional troweling. Basically having all the ridges in the same direction. OK, 
Okay, then same thing on the back. Use that flat side of the trial. Then I'm gonna back trial it. Basically the same way that the, the ridges are on the floor. Just go ahead and set it in place. Okay, then step on this, make sure it's well bonded. We'll go ahead and put our drain assembly in. I don't know if you want to. Okay, so this gasket, the beveled edge, needs to face up. So we'll squeeze this around our drain. That is important. If you need to I used to do push it for on a screwdriver while the other one direction. <laughs> I never had a leak, but you definitely want to have the bevel up. That makes a tighter connection to the pipe. But that's the reason that you want to make sure that that pipe is flush because you're going to be putting this locking nut. You take your locking nut, and this threads in. And then, and then this, this comes, comes with, with the drain, drain assembly, assembly and this allows you to tighten Just don't drop this. it in the drain. I always do And this that. is where it's, it's important, important to have this drain cut at, at flush with the subfloor because, because you want to be able to tighten this. this. It really just needs to be hand tightened. You don't have to get a wrench on it or anything. But if, you, if this was too high, you, would, you wouldn't be able to crank this down. So that's why it's important to have the drain uh, pipe even with that subfloor. So now that's sealed, and uh, we'll do a water test after we get all the waterproofing in. Okay, so that that's basically uh, the that's that's all there really is to it. It kind of makes it easy. So you know, I'm going to oh, why didn't I'm not sure. There we go. Okay, sorry. All right, so I want to just answer Jaden's question because he says he's from South Africa and he has. Um, you know, basically they build, and I hear this about a lot of um, homes outside of America. And I mean, a lot of the new homes too now, I mean, are basically being, you know, what I call them patio homes, but basically concrete floors. But I do hear a lot of European homes all being made out of mortar, brick, and uh, concrete. But he was asking, you know, what to do as far as uh, waterproofing goes. And if you had an existing bathroom that has, if I get this correct, Jaden, but you basically have... Um, a concrete subfloor and you want to add a shower that's where these systems probably don't make a whole heck of a lot of sense um, just because of you know, first off you know everything these systems require a level subfloor so pay attention to that as well I mean if it's a wood subfloor you'd have to use floor level or underneath of it you'd have to make sure you would you know if you took all the subflooring off adjust it make sure it's level especially some of these old old homes maybe um, there's some major settling going on, but you have to make sure that the subfloor is level because this is already pre-slope quarter inch per foot. Now you can be a quarter inch out and it's not going to be a big deal, um, but you don't want to be half inch, three quarters of an inch, an inch out or anything like that because then you're not going to get the proper drainage. Drainage. Now I've done some uh, weedy systems over concrete and that's usually only in scenarios where I only had to move the drain maybe a few inches and there was already a drain existing there. If you're adding a new shower, say in a basement or like Jaden's situation where there's no shower and there's a whole area that doesn't even have the piping addressed, it's gonna be easier to jackhammer out that concrete completely in that whole entire area. Get your drain location where it needs to be and do a mud bed type of system uh, because otherwise you're just going to be filling in concrete, leveling it, and then buying this really expensive system to put over it. And I really don't think at the end of the day it's going to save you that much time um, doing a weedy system if you're putting a whole new concrete floor underneath of it. So I would do a mud bed but definitely have the waterproofing uh, right directly under the tile. Don't go with anything with like a rubber liner. Not that you'd be doing it in that situation, but you know, one of the easiest ways over concrete is just to use hydro band, but you want to buy a Schluter type of drain, a drain that you can install. So let me just look up, I'm going to go on Amazon here. Um, 
so like a Schluter drain, which is basically has a flange on it. So, you know, basically, so this flange goes in and you know, you'd be embedding this into the mortar and then you would, you can liquid waterproof over top of it or you can use the curdy membrane and go over top of it. Unfortunately, I don't have anything yet on my channel about mortar beds. I do plan on doing that because there's a lot of situations where doing mortar beds make a heck of a lot of sense. And that's usually in a situation like that where you're doing a basement or a concrete floor that you have to move plumbing and you're taking everything out. Or um, if your floor is extremely unlevel, it's just going to be easier to actually mud it and you know you can always add more deck mud somewhere to slope it. So, but mostly what your question from I understand, Jaden, is the waterproofing. Yes, waterproofing directly under the tile is going to be the best way to go. Um, and Swanny, good question on the clips. Uh, I honestly, when I buy uh, clips, so my favorite tile leveling system is T Lock, and I've just been using it for so long that um, you know maybe I need. <laughs> I'm actually going to. Uh, a trade show here in a couple of weeks and maybe I should try some new ones but I've been always been really happy with this system so this is T-Lock uh, it's a wedge and clip system you buy this you know basically buy the wedges separately um, or you can buy it in a kit I, I have a lot of um, uh, links in this in my course and stuff like that but uh, you know if you're doing this all the time I always just buy the 132nd inch clips that typically a lot of tile is not rectified, especially porcelain tile. There's always like a little bit of a wedge on it where it's a little bit uh, further sticking out at the bottom of the tile. And these clips have the spacers in them. So you'll end up with a larger grout joint. Most of the time when I use these 132nd inch clips, I'll get 16th inch grout joints. Whereas if I got the 16th inch clips, I'm going, I'm almost getting an eighth inch size gap. So the, 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 the 132nd clips do make it easy because then you can kind of eye up your gaps and make it but if you're doing a travertine or something that has really rectified edging of tile then you can go with whatever the spacer is but for the most part i just buy a thousand of these you know i get big bags of these and then i can use it on all of them and if i had to space it out wider i can just use those horseshoe shims which is one of my other favorite um, tile spacers so um horse shoe shims yeah, so you can see, you can see here, I have, have it in my saved quarry here, but these guys, I, I know I highly recommend using that as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as you mixing systems, he's asking whether he can use a Schluter base and then use cement board and then red guard over that. Honestly, man, there's not gonna be any problem with that. It will definitely work. You're just not gonna get a warranty by anybody that way because they don't like to play together and they're not gonna warrant Schluter's not going to warrant because you used Red Guard and you're going over it. That's just not the way their system, I guess, in their mind is designed. But all intents and purposes, man, of course, it definitely, I think it'll definitely work. Uh, and those Schluter pans are not badly priced. I mean, that's one of the reasons those are kind of nice. I mean, a Schluter pan that's, uh, well, okay, let's go even the largest one there is, 48 by 60, uh, $172. Um, that's not too bad. And then if you get, uh, Really, the more common size would be, well, let's just go with the, what we'd be doing here by 48. Yeah, 100 bucks. I mean, that's really hard to beat, 100 bucks for a uh, just the pan system itself. Uh, now, you have to buy the drain, so that's obviously costing more. So you're re you are looking at like 370 bucks for the Schluter pan. But if you use the membrane system, you are saving a lot of money. This Weedy system, I mean, I'm not trying I'm, I'm – First off, I want to let you know, I'm not sponsored. I don't ever plan to be sponsored. I want to have my opinions to be what they are. And if I could say that now when my my channel is only 31,000 followers now, I'm definitely going to be able to say that in the future. I really don't want sponsorships. I don't want to be beholden by any of these companies. I'm just, you know, whatever works for me and, and um, that I find useful is how I want to promote it. But, you know, it's... Uh, you know, so weedy. I just, I, I, I just love it. I think it is an easy system, but it does cost money, and it's definitely something to consider uh, if you don't have a lot there. So, uh, but Gene, you're asking about um, the Schluter pan uh, back buttering. You can definitely do that. They're not requiring that. Um, they're also, re you know, uh, you know. I don't know why uh, Weedy wants you to use a quarter inch by quarter inch trowel uh, because they want you to back trowel the pan like I just showed you and then also do the floor where a Schluter you use a three eighths inch 
uh, by quarter inch square notch trowel and you just do the floor and then you just set the pan. Um, I've never had an issue with sluger pan that way. You can certainly back butter it if you feel more safe about it, but as long as you keep that thin set at a, a fluid consistency, like I showed you there at the membrane, um, basically your membrane ratio, the wettest ratio of the thin set, you're going to have no problem with it being bonded. And plus, I mean, like I said, Schluter, you're using a bigger trowel, so you're having more thin set on the floor. So you really shouldn't have a problem there. But it doesn't hurt. It definitely doesn't hurt to um, do that. You can definitely back butter it and be safe. There's better safe than sorry in, in any situation when it comes to that. You can't can't have too much coverage when it comes to your tile work. So uh, so basically, that, that, that was basically it on set the pan. It's that really that easy. Um, that probably really, even with me videoing it, probably took me less than an hour to do, and that's including cutting it down. Um, but here, I just have the highlights here, making sure you have that quarter inch of continuous bead around it. That's obviously the biggest part of it, is making sure that that drain assembly is sealed to your pan. And then uh, basically, yeah, I'm just highlighting those sections of it, making sure that rubber gasket goes on first and then you put the, the sleeve, this gasket here, the paper gasket is just allowing you to slide on your nut and be able to get it as tight as you can. But hand tight is all you need. You don't have to go crazy. You just want to wait 15 minutes before you actually set the pan or set the, you know, which you, usually takes time to thin set all of that. So you shouldn't have an issue there. Um, and then I have uh, recommendations for modified thin sets. What, honestly, with something like this, it's really not a big deal. But Ardex 5 is one of my favorite. The Schluter All Set is great for their membranes. I always end up buying a bag of Schluter All Set because um, usually doing Ditra on the outside of the floor and waterproofing it with that. So during you know the the pan setting day, I'm usually setting the Ditra the same day as well. So uh, you know you just obviously this all this thin set does add up. You don't want to be wasting it so you know if you can do the pan and the outside floor with that one bag of all set that's definitely the way to go and then again just making sure you back trowel it using a quarter by quarter that's just what weedy wants you to do so you know it's best to follow their their guidance on it and then making sure that that connection has that bevel going up so that's pretty much it uh yeah so we'll get on to the next section of the course here installing the weedy panels and these weedy panels are awesome they're you know as far as foam board goes i don't know if there's a better foam board out there in a lot of ways uh because it definitely uh you know it's the most rigid compared to like schluter curdy board uh even the go board i love it i love go board but uh the weedy is definitely more rigid i find it to be you know it, again it's waterproof all the way through so there's a lot of things about it that just make it a superior board. So let's get into the installing the weedy panels on the walls. This should be a breeze, um, but there's a lot of tips in here on, on how to go about that. Okay, so we got 41 and a half. We'll just make it 41 and a quarter. We don't wanna be overly tight, plus you got the boards coming in on the sides. We'll just cut these. So this is one of the biggest reasons why this is easy, is because it just takes a utility knife, much easier than cement board or hardy backer with all that dust, it's lightweight. And one nice thing is that this core foam area is completely waterproof as well. So a lot of other boards that are similar to this, the, the actual core is not waterproof, but this is. So if you were to accidentally just puncture the fr fr front of this, it's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to be compromised. Now, obviously, if you went all the way through it, you know, that's going to cause a leak. But it makes it nice for tiling because if I use a grinder to sharpen up anything, if I hit the front of the board, it's not a big deal. A lot of the other boards, it's just a surface coating of waterproofing, and if you penetrate that, it's, it's no longer good. But with the weedy board, it's, it's, it's waterproof all the way through the foam core, which is really nice. Just make sure your dado your, your rabbit, rabbit joint. joint. I'm gonna fill this up with sealant. So just put a large bead. Try to get this insulation out of the way here. So just fill up that entire rabbit joint. 
So this is where as a contractor you can buy sausage tubes and save yourself some time and money because you're not buying the little cartridges. Uh, and I actually started using my automatic gun <laughs> for this because it'll hurt your forearms by the time you're done squeezing all this sealant because it is kind of thick. And then just make sure that's all tight in there. You can see how some of this is oozing out of that joint. That's what you want to see. If you don't see that, you can always pick up the sheet again. Okay, add a so little your bit first more, put it in there. Washers. You want to keep up off the floor about four inches. All right, so I did make a mistake here. Right they the do want you one foot. No, I've been doing this for 15 years. You don't want to, basically, you don't want to push this board out of that rabbit joint. You want to keep it up about four inches. So that you want to foot up. So you just use these washers and screws that come with it. And you just want to compress these washers until they're flush with the, or recessed from the board. So I wanted to pause here real quick because I wanted to reiterate, I did make a mistake on this video um, as far as the location of that first row of screws. I'll leave a link in the description of the actual documentation of the installation instructions of this, but you want to be one foot off of the floor. And the main reason for that is to keep prevent that board from going further back into the wall cavity and making a separation between the pan and the actual board. So always pay attention to any new updates of rules that some of these manufacturers makes. And I really, really highly recommend if you're a contractor to get certified installing this system, it'll extend the warranty of the system and you'll learn a lot and be up to date on their new rules. But I'll leave in the link in the description of the installation instructions, but start with your first row of screws 12 inches off of the main floor. Put a nice generous bead on top of this second board here. So yeah, the big thing about this is you don't want to run out of sealant because then you don't get the job done. Um, so even in this small okay, shower. Go ahead and pinch these two boards I would together. just say go ahead and get 10 tubes of sealant. That's probably, you might have one left over, one but. Washer. It's easy to run out. I mean, you're filling that, those rabbit joints up with a lot of sealant, and then you're putting it. You, want, you don't want to be skimpy on this. You want to be, uh, you know, really making sure everything's well bonded. Okay, so on the side wall, you want to put your walls up first before you put the curb in. So I always go, the edge of it is going to be 38 inches. I always go an inch past that area. And honestly, we'll just, we're going to bring, be bringing the tile all the way out to the edge of this. So we're like 41 inches. So I'm just going to make this 41. Well, you we don't have to go quite there. We'll go 40 inches just to meet our board here. But you just want it to come past outside of your shower and then butt your curb up to that waterproofing. Any waterproofing that comes outside of the shower area beyond the towel area, don't worry about it. You can just uh, do some drywall mud over that waterproofing. But I think it's really important to just make sure that everything from the curb in is 100% waterproof. So then if your pan isn't really tight to the wall either, you're going yeah, to hog up, up a lot of sealant there as well. That's why I really do, a bead. you know, even these kits that they the have there. for this, they don't usually have enough sealant in a lot of ways. I think they come with seven tubes of sealant. Um, but, you know, if you're going this far with this waterproofing, make it come outside the shower. Don't worry about it. See how that's all. Uh, you'll be able to beaten up there. easily put drywall mud over top of it, as you'll see in this course in the way that I go about this. Hey Shannon, awesome prospect park, great.
So anywhere that the board meets the board, I mean, it's just as simple as that. This is, uh, like I said, I think it's a faster system than Schluter at the end of the day because of the sealant application. And I mean, you're still using washers and screws and Schluter, you're not really doing too much different other than the way that this is adding just sealing in between each one. But I tell you what, I, you know, once some of these foam boards came out, I just never use cement board again. I never want to inhale, especially hardy backer. Okay, okay so, so this, this is a really is a nice, nice feature, feature of using a foam, foam board, board like this because you can just easily find, find your locations. locations. So just, just by poking, poking it on your board, you can find the location of your valves and then even your ports. So that, that's, that's something you can't, you can't do with cement, cement board. board. So now we have the indication of where our valve is and then where our port is. So we'll cut a hole in this. All right, so we're just using a spade bit for your port. And you can cut this with a utility knife, obviously, but a four and a half inch hole is what you want around around your valve. And that is a delta valve. I get a lot of questions about that because it, because it comes with a square plaster okay, cord. You don't need that for doing top. for this guy. So okay, use the four and a half. Just make this fairly tight around it. And again, you can use a utility knife for that. It's not like you have to use a hole saw. This just makes it a neater cut. Okay, so then anytime you have something really close to the edge of the stud like that, put a, a cover on this. So you don't, or a, a steel plate, so you don't penetrate anything. Yeah, Gene, we'll be getting into that in here pretty shortly. But yeah, that's a, I don't know why they don't make valve seals for diverter valves. I really wish they did. I really don't understand why they don't, but you'll All right, see so you can like piece that. as many pieces as you want. I only bought six boards for this because, you know, I'm trying to save money, just like everyone else. Um, but uh, you can just piece this all in, so you don't need to just have full sheets on here. So it's a matter of, you might go through a little bit more sealant if you use more pieces because you have to put the weedy sealant on each joint, but not a big deal. So I'm just going to skip one of these scrap, scrap pieces in. This is nine and seven eighths, nine and three quarter. And just so you know, once you get this waterproofed, if you had a hard time getting into the tile, you can take a shower in this. All you have to do is put the cartridge in your valve. So if it's like your only bathroom and you're just, you just can't seem to get this done in a timely fashion, I mean, it's going to be functional after you get everything sealed. So, you know, the tile is just a decorative part of it. And I wouldn't want to see you do that because it would probably ruin motivation of getting it done. But okay, it is. So We'll measure our curb, we'll make it tight. So we've got 40, 40 and 9 sixteenths. So this is considered the lean curb. This is a really narrow curb. And I like using them because I don't really like really large curbs. I'd rather have a thinner, thinner curb. Thin set to embed this. And then you want to fill that entire rabbit joint. Just seal it. I'll just do it on the curb as well on the sides. Okay, and then a little bit where it's going to meet the weedy board here. Now this is a this is considered the lean curve. 
the skinny curve. And the reason I like doing this, so there's two reasons I really like this, this uh, curb. And one is it's waterproof all the way through. So if I put screws into my shower doors, I don't have to worry about it. And then secondly, I can just get a four inch curb top that will go over this and it'll, it'll cover the tile on the other side. So I kind of like a, a skinnier threshold. If you went with the standard curb, which is four and a half inches, you're talking about having a curb that's six and a half inches wide. And I don't really see much reason for that. So it's all preference of what you want for your final look. But uh, yeah, I, mean, I like, I like the, the skinny curb for this type of situation. Okay, so just double check your, your level. And then it all should pitch all the way in the way that the curb is already designed, but just double check. But you can always adjust any unlevelness with the curb itself, but having the waterproofing, you know, going in is, a, is pretty much the ideal way to go. Okay, so we're gonna address all the seams. So again, just going over the corner joint. Now, I do recommend if you buy the kit, just get this simple little corner trowel. This really makes it easy to keep the corners nice and sealed. It makes it tighter to the wall too. And you have to put a little bit of excess on these washers in the corner here. This is where your forearms are basically burning at this point. So <laughs> maybe the sausage gun would be a good idea. So this corner trowel really makes it nice to spread it. And then the roll of thumb on the, the sealant spreading, it needs to be one inch past all the washers. So try to get a minimum of a one inch band on the other side of the corner. And then on these washers, just have it go past one inch past the washers. So I kind of ran out of ceiling. I only have one more tube left. And I wanted one tube to make sure I get this floor done so that I can set tile the next day. So I'm gonna get another tube, but it's not highly important. It's not gonna slow me down missing this part of the waterproofing above here, but the floor is gonna be pretty important. My important concept today is just to get the, the pan done. So you wanna go over all your corners again. And this is where I would definitely leave, give yourself a, a full tube, because this is obviously the most critical part of the whole system. So that corner trowel really does make a nice, even thing. Okay, so just pay attention to your corners. Make sure it looks like you have a continuous bead or just a continuous coverage and again like it's basically one inch on the other side of these seams but just pay attention to these corners and make sure they look like they're all nice and sealed so then I'll just grab a another tube to finish this off okay. Okay, so that's that's it. That's uh, a pretty fast system. It probably took me another two hours. I usually get these done in three to four hours. Uh, and really, two hours after, you not even two hours. I think they stayed on weedy two hours. But you can go ahead and flood test this within two hours and then set your, your um, tile on top of uh, this base. So we're going to get into the tiling in my next uh, part series. But I always recommend you doing your shower floor work first. 
So if you're in a rush and you're really trying to get something done, you can set this weedy pit system in the morning and then immediately, uh, you know, put this over, you know, tile it the same day. So again, um, I really just highlight everything. I'm not going to go through everything because, uh, you know, we just walked all the way through that, but this is just a reminder. So if you watch this video and I hope that you use this course way in advance before you actually do the job, uh, and you don't have to go through and watch, you know, a 16 minute video again, you already kind of have that in your brain. Now, now you can just go in here and just, uh, re-highlight yourself on, on different things. But I, I do have the kits here, uh, that kind of specify all the different, uh, size kits. They have a three by three, three by four, three by five. They have an offset drain. So if you say, if you couldn't move your drain for your tub, you can do an offset. Uh, you have a three by six center. Uh, and then I think their largest pan, 48 by 60. Oh, it's 48 by 72. I did forget about that one. So these are all um, the systems that they have. And then I just have links here. This is not to any type of affiliate thing. This is just to, uh, this is actually master wholesale. And as you can see, they have all their pricing here. You can order this stuff online from them, but the shipping does uh, cost a bit. So I would definitely recommend uh, trying to find a towel shop near you. Uh, I might have, I should have the link in here for it. Oh, here it is, local distributor. So you can go, oh, okay, weedy.com actually, I'm sorry. So weedy has, uh, you know, basically their locations depending on where you live. So you can find your location for your weedy distributor. That is going to be the best price. And if you're a contractor, any of those stores, just bring your business card in and you're gonna get the contractor pricing for sure. I mean, the kits are great, but I really think that they short you on. So even like this three by four, how many, how many uh, tubes of sealant? Tubes of sealant, eight. See, I needed, I needed nine for that shower. That's what I always say to get 10. Um, and that's because you're just using a lot of it to fill in that rabbit joint. It, you know, if everything was perfect, like it was done in, you know, like some kind of model or a mock-up or something, maybe that would work. But I always, I do always get more sealant. Architectural Sheet Metal, thanks for joining in here. Definitely, uh, if you guys are doing any metal roofing, check out his channel. He's an expert on that. Uh, and Gene, we're going to get into your additional waterproofing around that diverter valve. That is one area that none of these systems seem to have. So, but anyways, um, yeah, I mean, they basically, uh, I'm just going outlining how to go about doing it, just kind of refreshing your memory. I don't think I have anything else other than a lot of pictures. I like to have pictures because I'm a visual person. Uh, four and a half inches. for So this is like something that you might forget about. Four and a half inch holes, what you need for the diverter valve so you can put the valve seal in. That's important to know. You don't have to buy a hole saw to do this. You can just use a utility knife, just make a circle and cut it out, not a big deal. Uh, the diverters, that all depends on the system that you're installing. Again, this was a Delta system I installed. So these do, the valves have the square plaster guards on. You don't need to leave that square plaster guard on. You don't need it at all, actually. So using a, um, I mean, main, the main reason they have that plaster guard is for reference of the depth. But and then if you had a fiberglass unit of some sort, you want to keep that plaster guard on there for that. But other than that, there's really no reason to keep it on there. So you don't have to keep, you know, try to put a round hole in a, in a square uh, or however you want to say that. But <laughs> anyways, um, making sure you have nail plates, you're always going to find a screw to go into your plumbing uh, in the curb. So yeah, this is basically highlighted in picture form so you can quickly go through here uh, right before you're ready to install and just refresh your memory on it. And then I have a whole bunch of uh, additional items that you, you know, quarter inch by quarter inch trial, the pro knee pads. Hey, if you're doing this stuff all the time, guys, buy yourself, do yourself a favor. I really wish I would have because I, I, I don't have knee problems yet, but um, get some knee pads, man. I, I used to kneel on broken tile all the time. Never bothered me. Now, I'm, uh, you know, if I do a tile floor and it takes me four and a half hours, uh, my knees are hurting pretty bad. So pro knees, if you're a professional, get them. I mean, you're going to outlast your competition if you, if you take care of yourself. And again, if you ever have any question in my course, uh, you know, be sure to put that on there. But Yusuf, I think, Yusuf, I think that's how you pronounce your name. You asked me about a curbless system. I am going to be probably Sunday morning. I'm going to probably put it. I just uh, edited a curbless weedy system. So it's basically the same process with the building panels and basically connecting the drain. It just has a little bit of a difference in framing 
and putting in a weedy system. So I'm going to have that probably out um, Sunday morning, I believe. I just got finished with that video today. Uh, and uh, yeah, so keep, you know, Yusuf, stay on my channel. Uh, I'll definitely have something out there soon for the curbless. Uh, and I really find that Weedy is one of the easiest ones when it comes to that. So additional waterproofing. Gene, this is where it's going to answer your question on here. This isn't like the best way to go. I mean, you know, I, 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 this is sufficient. There are better ways to go about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is the way I've done it and kind of just making it closer to it. But unfortunately, with a diverter valve, you're, you're really highly relying on that escutcheon plate to keep the water out of that area. But as you'll see here, I just used a little bit of Curdy band. Uh, I'm sure Weedy doesn't like me using Curdy. Schluter products on their stuff. I, you know, if I would have had the seam tape, if I would have had some of that left over, I would have used it. But again, I'm not sponsored, never plan on it. I don't really care. I, uh, I just use what works basically. Um, but technically, you can't be using Schluter products on uh, weedy systems. So we'll get right into the additional waterproofing here. Okay, okay so, so we're going to use a mixing valve flexi collar for around our valve. So you basically just want to. Then set this on. And I'm using an eighth by eighth inch square notch trowel. So you basically just, if there's a fatter end and there's a skinnier end, the fatter end goes into the cavity and then just. And then we got some flexi collar sealing tape. These are for our ports. I find this to be really important. It even has like a little rubber gasket on it, so it makes it nice to seal on the on your pipe that you fit in here. This is a little overkill, if you ask me, but. I always do put it on there. It might be a little bit overkill for a shower head, but. Okay, so they don't, are you wanna? Yeah. So they don't make a, um, a valve seal like this for the, the hand port. So I'm just gonna towel floor down, by the way. kinda create my own little patch here. This just gets it closer to it. It's still really not going to create the dam like it does on the uh, valve seal, but it's better than nothing. It gets it closer to it, ensures that you have waterproofing as close as you can. All right, and then I'll be able to just cut this out really closely to that valve after I'm done. But I can go ahead and towel directly up around here and then cut out the membrane afterwards. Okay, so then after you set the pan and everything, just put a couple bags of thin set on this. It's just gonna weight down that pan, make sure it stays well bonded shouldn't have any problems but it's just extra insurance it's the end of the day for the first day that's pretty much it. okay so we're going to finish off our our re sealant since i ran out so you want to get all these seams and all the it's first thing in the morning wash it cleaner in the mornings Okay, so then on this corner bead, I'd recommend just using some weedy sealant to cover over this corner. You can also use uh, the joint, uh, or I should say the, what would that be? The seam tape that it, it comes with. But I would just recommend covering this because you want this to be water, you know, you don't want water getting to this corner bead so you just just cover this with the weedy sealant and this will prevent that from rusting out if water ever got to it 
Yeah, that corner bait is pretty cheap stuff, so it, if water did get to it, it will rust away immediately. Um, but honestly, that is okay. So for this drywall seam, I'm going to put some curdy band over that seam. This does two things: one, it makes sure that's everything waterproof from the shower in. Secondly, it's a good um, if your tile doesn't come over this transition. This is almost like a you know an advanced version of drywall tape. So you can just go right over this with the drywall mud. So I like the transition this with that curdy membrane. And again, this is like. You know, probably the way, well, Weedy would want their seam tape on this. Um, but it is a little bit of overkill. I mean, it's obviously way outside of the shower. Uh, but, you know, if you have the products, you might as well go ahead and use it. So, Gene, I hope that kind of helps you out. There's really not a whole heck of a lot for that valve um, seal around there. Um, that is going to make it exactly the way Schluter did it. Uh, so, but, again, hey, if you're a contractor, um, you know, getting that weedy certification uh, will extend the warranty. I do have a little link here to go to your uh, for the weedy warranty, so you know about that. I think it's 15, 15 years if you're a contractor and you're certified, but it's ten years for everybody else. But here, just going quickly over it, you want to use an eight by eight inch notch square notch trowel for for the valve seals, and then again, I really really think it's important to at least get one on that pipe seal for your handheld. As far as the shower head, you know, you take your own, you know, precaution on that. I, it's really unlikely that you're going to get water that high up on the wall. Um, but, you know, the pipe seal, at least for around the port, really makes a lot of sense. And then, again, just have some helpful tools and things at the bottom of this as well. Uh, and then flood testing. We'll just finish this up for today. We're, I can't believe we're already at an hour and 15 minutes. I can keep going and going with this stuff. I guess I might be in the right field if I can do that. But, uh David, what compound did you use to attach the band? That was Schluter's all set, uh, a thin set. That's basically, you want to use thin set to ad ad adhere membranes like that. So that's what I used there. And if it ever, which this definitely went outside of the towel area, uh, you can always just, after you do the tile, you can just use some drywall mud and skim over it as if it was a piece of drywall tape. Uh, really easy. So you don't have to worry about that waterproofing sticking out. You can just uh, drywall mud over it. And uh, all right, so last three minutes here, and then if there's any other questions, I'll stay on here for a little bit longer. But I do try to keep these things under an hour and a half if I can. Okay, so then you want to flood test your your pan. Now, typically, it's best to let this sit overnight, 24 hours. Most of us don't have the time for that. <laughs> so I usually just fill it up while I'm doing my drywall work in the morning, and then let it drain. So about two hours. Two to three hours on max, or probably yeah, literally pretty much two hours is how long I'm letting the water sit in here. But you just want to use one of these little plugs, just has a rubber gasket on the side of it, and you just put that in the, the drain. Yeah, the actual bulb, um, what do you call it, the ball plug that you can actually put air into is going to work better. These OD things work, but sometimes they do leak. Uh, they don't. Not the actual pan, but the actual plug ends up leaking. So, but you're best to have this sit overnight, 24 hours, to get a real test of what's going on. Um, but really, honestly, usually when there's ever a problem, you usually know within the first hour, and and I'll explain that here shortly. Okay, so what I recommend after you get the water filled is just put this right on the drain location and measure your water level. So it's two and a half inches. We're gonna test, we're gonna double check this in about an hour to see where we're at with that. But if it, if it obviously went lower, then you have a leak. But what you're looking for is any bubbles coming up out of any areas. Because if you see bubbles, that means it's leaking as well. So um, just pay attention to see if you see any bubbles and then just measure down to your drain and hold on to that measurement so that you can measure that in another hour or so and see if anything's dropped. Now sometimes if you uh, don't have your plug securely anchored, it can uh, leak through that. So make sure you don't see any bubbles around your drain port. But uh, yeah, so it's just a matter of measuring it and making sure you don't see any bubbles coming out of it and that should be good. 
Okay, so about an hour, two hours, well, about two hours later. Let's go ahead and double check our water level. So we still got two and a half inches. I didn't see any bubble the whole time it was sitting here. So that means that we should be good to go. Now again, the, the ultimate test would be to set this overnight and then release it in the morning if you have time. But, you know, I've been doing this long enough that I really feel comfortable with the way that I'm installing this. And, uh, you know, a couple hours just a flood test to make sure that there isn't anything abnormal about it um, works for me. Um, so we'll just go ahead and drain it, let this drain. So I end up tiling right after this. Uh, so you want to air dry this, put a fan on it, make sure that that floor kind of dries out a bit before applying thin set because you want to have a, a bonding issue with your thin set uh, before tiling. So that's it. That's the weedy system. You know, obviously, as I was stating earlier, it is a pricey system, but for a DIYer, uh, I really think that that is one one system that. Uh, will make it really easy for you to do everything. So uh, Isis Crush, yeah, that's a good idea. Put a little bit of grease around that uh, rubber gasket on the um, OD drain, probably would make a difference. But honestly, those, those little um, ball plugs that you fill up with air is probably the ultimate way. Uh, again, a lot of those you know, little OD plugs, they do end up leaking a little bit. And uh, yeah, so this is just uh, the highlights as usual in my course. Trying to go over everything, but yeah, before you set that tile, you want to have this not completely dry, but you want to have it dry enough that the thin set's going to bond properly. So, in our next section, we'll actually be getting into the tiling process, which I think should be the fun part of the project. So, I have a lot of great tiling tips in there. If you don't know me, I am a certified tile installer, so I've been doing this for a long time, and hopefully, we'll provide you some great tips on. Uh, installing tile, making it fun, making it easier on you. And it really does come down to planning ahead and doing everything. So, um, yeah. So the Sentinel system, David, I don't really, I'm not familiar with what that is. Um, I'm not sure if I've heard of that one. Maybe it's a, a certain off-brand system that is similar to this. I'm not sure. Um, but, um, yeah, weekend house flippers, you're right. Using a battery-powered caulking gun does work. I did start using that. Uh, and that definitely makes a big difference. But the sausage tubes also make a big difference as well. Uh, you're going to be tiling on Saturday, Steve. Awesome. Just uh, set the tile floor. Do you use a ledger for the first row? Steve, that is really totally up to you. Um, a lot of tile setters still love using ledger boards and then filling in that tile below, you know, from that ledger board down to the shower floor. I personally used to do that uh, probably seven years of the 15 years I've been doing nothing but bathrooms. And then once I started getting a good laser, I just go with a laser. And you'll see that into my tiling section here when I probably maybe Sunday evening I'll do it. But it sounds like you're starting Saturday, so that's good. But I I personally like just using the laser and then scribe cutting that tile until I meet my laser nice and level. And then I work my way up. I never really did like filling in the tile later. I think it makes it somewhat more difficult in a way because you're trying to maintain a 16th inch gap to, towards the floor. And then you're trying to maintain your your grout joint, um, you know, consistent from where your ledger board was. So totally up to you, man. Um, I definitely, I, I, I like using the laser and just making sure that my tile sits with that laser and uh, make sure it conforms to the, to the floor. I just, I don't know, I just find it to be easier rather than filling it in later. But a ledger board is definitely one way to go about it. Uh, again, it's just all and what you're used to be being using. So, yeah, off-brand David. Yeah, I'd, then the central. I mean, it probably does work the same. You know, just like some of these Amazon shower faucets and stuff. They're all, you know, they're pretty comparable to the big name brands. Uh, so, you know, I guess that's the, you know, the nature of, uh, of things of how things change on that. So, anyways, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thanks so much. If you guys want to join the course, it would help support this platform. You can always ask me a question when you're in this course. Uh, but yeah, give me a like on this video if you can. And uh, I'll probably have a premiere coming out Saturday morning uh, about doing a Delta shower system out of all copper. I might have a little bit of a live Q&A there. So Steve, if you're doing tiling, um, stay tuned. I might be able to help you out in the moment on a live stream. But then Sunday evening, I'll probably get into my fifth portion of this, which will be the tiling process. So have a great evening, everyone. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.